now. Hi, welcome to season six. We're in episode two of a focus that we have on ROI, um, return on investment. Some people call it ROI. Um, I'm Mary Abazia, and with me is Tom Smitali and Sean Wellen. Um, we're all with Impact Planning Group, and uh, we love to talk about marketing. Um, with ROI, uh, it's the central nervous system of marketing. You know, you can have a wonderful customer insight, you can have um, a fantastic value proposition, but frankly, if you don't know how to manage, or first measure it and manage your ROI, return on investment, uh, you're going to be in trouble. And so we're really going to, this episode, we're going to look at more of the performance of it that leads to your ROI. Um, Sean, I'm going to ask you first, how do you even know if marketing is contributing to that success and um, how other functions within your organization may have an impact on that success? It's interesting, quite. I mean, I could be flippant and say, if it's a major success, just claim it, right? Just make sure you associate with success. I think the truth is, um, it's possibly a dangerous way to think because as soon as you start to try and appropriate um, success to a specific individual team or department, you're also opening the door to appropriate blame. And as we know, these things tend to be multifactorial, that, that success is usually a combination of everyone's efforts. So my first caveat would be, you know, think more team-like than department-like. But of course, that's idealistic. In reality, people, you have to justify your existence and your costs. And to do that, you need to demonstrate success. So let's take it from that perspective. And I would say that it, <laughs> this, is, this is the great fence-sitting um, answer, but it rather depends. If it's a very direct initiative, if you said, let's put this ad in this space or this, this uh, online promotion, and even had a promotion code or a special number to call. Easy to then measure the response to that and say this initiative drove this many inquiries or leads or orders. So some initiatives lend themselves to being very measurable. In reality though, they usually, the, the responsibility of more than just marketing, sales have to close the orders, operations have to deliver on them. So I, I think it's, it's a question of, of, of looking at what the baseline is and first and foremost seeing if there's an improvement and only then try and take that apart and say what were the factors that drove that improvement with a view to improving but don't get too hung up on on, on claiming uh claiming all the glory or of avoiding uh, anything less than that so so look for the baseline improvement but don't get too hung up on the individual got it tom we talked a little bit about this last time, you know, when marketing is thought about very, uh, very linearly or just, you know, kind of ice in an isolated fashion, not with marketing with the capital M the way we like to talk about it, but like marketing with the small M where they're just thought about as, you know, um, lead generators or campaign executors. Actually, those kinds of things are relatively easy to, as Sean already explained, I think, relatively easy to, to capture, you know, how many leads did you generate? How much did the campaign cost? But something that you said, Sean, as sort of a, of a joke earlier, I actually really believe in, and that is you said, just take credit for it. Um, I, I wanna modify that a little bit. Um, I think that, that, that marketers to elevate themselves in the organization um, need to show that they're the ultimate team players, right? They are the orchestrators of company strategy and our perfect vision. So they are highly involved in with just about every other functional area in the company. And so what I think that marketing needs to do to, to kind of promote that, that, that their, their important role in the organization is to look at, um, you know, successes and failures in the company and see what part and what role that they had in those and, and actually claim them. For example, you know, if sales is doing very, very well, is it possibly because the marketing team is helping to kind of identify ideal customers and best fit clients and the sales group maybe is doing a little bit better job with marketing's help of calling on the right customers 
and, and therefore increasing their ability to close deals. And, and, and marketing needs to either claim their, their, their role in that success or do what they can to begin to, um, you know, play a role in defining those targets a little bit more in the company if they're not involved right away. So those that, you know, there's a lot of examples like that, but I think that's what, um, you know, marketing can do to begin to, to prove their impact beyond the things that are very obviously ascribed to them, lead generation, campaign response rates, et cetera. So, so one way of looking at that, Tom, as I listening to you is it's not so much about claiming credit or, or demonstrating success, but the ultimate goal is success. Obviously, that's what we're in business for. And it's, it's making sure that, that, that rather than looking at a specific action, then translating that into success, you, you, you're looking at the feedback that comes from that, whether it's feedback from the sales force saying this is what we're hearing and you adapt. So, so creating that, that, that orchestration, which we talked about before, where marketing is pulling all of the, is waving the bat on and getting everyone to play in tune. Um, that's where the definition of success is not to defend or to explain as much as to continuously improve based on that feedback and be that hub, I guess. And that's the ultimate definition of success when you're that, that hub that, that links all the parts of the business together. Yeah. Um, I, this kind of, I'm having flashbacks to when I was um, at Basie's, which is a Booz Allen sales estimate system where we measure all the different elements of a marketing campaign and how the customer reacted or potentially would react. And that's where I think that this is an art and a science question too, is, you know, there's the art part of marketing that is hard to measure and everyone can, can argue, but there is a science side to it and you have to measure everything. Um, and I think sometimes marketing or other parts of the organization choose what they want to measure and claim that as success. And, and in the end of the day, it's, you know, where marketing can say, you know, this is how the customer reacted and this is, this is the results. These were the metrics that we were trying to, to achieve. And it's not always sales. Sometimes it is just gaining awareness within a, a certain group. But it, but it is ultimately marketing's job to measure the right things and communicate the right things. And sometimes it's a bummer. Sometimes they have to say, yeah, I really blew it. You know, that campaign that we did, we targeted the wrong audience and here's the evidence. So let's stop doing that. Let's move to something else. So even if, you know, ultimately marketing is to blame, sometimes they have to pivot and, and, and say, okay, we need to do something else and be a team player, as you were saying, Sean. I think that's really important, Mary, because what you've said, you know, I said at the beginning that it's a dangerous, potentially a dangerous mindset to think of, of taking credit because it leads to a portion in blame. Um, that's kind of what you, you're saying. If you're so fixated on taking credit, maybe it's harder to then say, well, that didn't work. Because if anything, marketing is about experimentation. You would expect to get some things wrong or at least not get them perfectly right first time because it's a dynamic and fluid environment. So accept and embrace the failures as well, because turning those into a success is, is also part of the marketing role. And I think that's really important mindset because marketing as these orchestrators, these ultimate team players, I mean, if you can be positioned as the hub of continuous learning for your organization, right? Whether it's good news or bad news, if you're the ones that, that are, are, are really taking some responsibility for optimization, you know, for example, when things are going wrong, what's going wrong? What, what, is, it, what is it about our targets, our positioning, you know, um, our value propositions, um, you know, that in itself, in time, good times or, or bad, really does underscore the importance of marketing and the role that you can play that, that, that really solidifies um, the, the, the functions um, in place in the, in, in the bigger company. Yeah, but how do you prioritize? You know, thinking about clients that we've worked with, um, you know, sometimes you have bad and, and good experiences. Uh, what, what have you seen or what have you experienced where companies have prioritized their work that contribute to either that the top line or bottom line, where has it been effective? You know, I think that, that this is one of the, uh, the fundamental and age old questions of marketing, isn't it? Because we, we exist in two uh, timeframes, you know, you've got the, the, the short term, the, 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 the quarter sales, if you like, the lead generation, the, mm. the, the interest, the, the, the promotions of particular products or services. But we also have this responsibility for building a, a, uh, uh, a long-standing um, position for the business, branding, if you will. 
So really, when we look at, at where we should spend our time, for instant gratification, then all your spend goes on activation, on promotions. But the job is more than that, and, and arguably slightly tips more in favor of brand building, of laying down those, those strong foundations that all of your promotions and activity come, come off. If you look at car companies, look at um, BMW, they will have uh, promotions. They'll have 3.9% APR on the one series or whatever it is. Every month there'll be a promotion. That'll be a very specific measurable marketing activity that will be measured in terms of increased sales. But the, the ultimate driving machine, which is the tagline they use around the world as, as promoting their, their overall business as one of luxury cars, cannot be ignored for short-term promotion. So they, like every business, has to split activation, sales generation, with, with brand building. And I mean, conventionally, people talk about maybe 60-40 with the 60% of activity being on that brand building because it creates sustainable value that you can build on going forward. So um, I guess every business will be different, but they sound like pretty good rules of thumb to me in terms of where you should spend your time. Tom, what do you think? I think a lot of it is a function of, 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 of where, um, when we're talking about prioritization, Sean, I'm, I'm reacting to Sean's 60-40 split. That probably depends on where you start today, where marketing's position is in the company today. And, and a lot of people listening might find themselves in a, you know, 1090, <laughs> you know, not, or, or, or 100 zero. you know, all of it is about um, execution of lead campaigns and cl collateral development, you know. So I think the idea is to begin to try to make inroads into working closer to that 60 40, you know, split where you're more strategic than executional, you know. And I think that's uh, that's that can be a long process depending on on, on where you're, you're you're going, but you know, bringing it back to the idea of prioritization, you know, I think that it, it, that, that, is, that is where marketing can maybe begin to prove its worth if they're not counted on for a lot of strategy work right now and today. You know, I think we've talked in past episodes, if you want to elevate marketing's role, you got to start somewhere. Where can you start? Maybe it's a project around better helping the organization define customer needs. Maybe it's about helping the organization get a better handle on its prioritization of what it's doing, you know, who they're calling on or where the emphasis is in terms of product lines and services. You know, marketing should be in, in the case where they want more strategic responsibility, they should be um, volunteering to take on those projects. And even if the answer is no, maybe they ought to be doing it on their own. Maybe they should be trying to find a way to kind of get, um, you know, get some ideas around that and bring it back to the, the business and just say, hey, this is, this is what we, we think. I think the, the long-term benefit of that is even if the business completely ignores them, they can begin to maybe prioritize their own work as things are coming in. They all, the marketing departments always have more work coming from the outside than they can handle. Maybe this prioritization can help them decide what they're going to, you know, do uh, and focus on first on this path to be coming closer and closer and closer to that 60, 40, 70, 30 strategic versus execution split. Yeah, I, I like this, um, this, this discussion because I think that it has even um, longer legs, if you will, to it because this prompts us to ask, well, where else in the organization is marketing helping to orchestrate activities? And R&D is one of them. Uh, where we had worked with several companies. And the question is, is how should R&D be investing their time to be able to make sure that the right types of things are coming through the pipe and connecting to whatever the, the, the new world is. And um, I'm, Polaroid is probably one of the worst, best examples. You know, they were, they were measuring how customers were liking this little device. And frankly, they were missing a big, big picture. And if R&D had been working on future digital type things, um, you know, they would be around today. So uh, we see it all the time in medical device companies. There's all types of things that they can be working on 
but if they work with marketing and, and find out what sales is saying are the new trends, then they really can start to make sure that the total team, if you will, from your conversation before, uh, Sean, when you were saying the team, they have to have a, a more global view of what priorities each of those teams should be working on. So they're ultimately developing the right things for the salespeople to be um, delivering. I, I agree. I, I'd add one thing as well, listening to Tom and, and to you, Mary, as well, that, that when it comes to setting priorities, there's, there's a degree of, um, of being proactive in as much as if you don't set priorities yourself, they will be set for you. And one of the, 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 the tragedies that I see when you've got good strategic thinkers with good tools that, that could maybe add more value, at least in the medium to long term, in a business, but yet the demands are placed on them are pretty much a sales support or lead generation. And the priority also has to be not to be just reactive and to make sure, as Tom was saying, that you, you find a way to push against that door and get some access into the, into the corner office where you're adding value over and above a simple linear measure of, of I spend this and I get this back. You know, there needs to be more to it than that. And it's something that, that priorities are, uh, I'm not just reactive. Make sure you take time to to have that that vision thing of where you want the marketing to go within your specific business. Mm, that's a good point, and Tom. The vision thing. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have the vision the thing. Yeah, no, the vision. You know, unless we are like Elon Musk, where you can just have you know a long, long, long horizon and take your time and develop uh, things. Most of us aren't don't have that luxury, so. Um, we hope that you've enjoyed this, uh, this episode. Uh, you can find all our podcasts on The Accidental Marketer on YouTube and SoundCloud. And we always would love to hear if you have comments or would like for us to, to tackle any other topics. We're, we're open to your suggestions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.